We're going to talk about the um, the U shuttle using the U shuttle, the UDT-1 and Hoboware Pro. The shuttles are not supported by the free version of Hoboware. You do need the paid version uh, Hoboware Pro to use either of the shuttles, the waterproof shuttle or the U shuttle. The U shuttle is a um, it has an on off button on it. So we can see down here at the bottom of the screen that we do have it connected. If I turn this off, if I turn off the, uh, the on off button, it will go away. It will shut off. Um, or if you don't have it turned on, it will, it will not be recognized. So we're going to just briefly go through the operation of, of this device for you. To access the shuttle management screen, you click device, manage shuttle, and here's our U shuttle management screen. Uh, again, it we uh, it describes itself as a as a U shuttle. Here's the serial number, the firmware version that's available. There are two sets of batteries or two batteries in this device. There are two double A's that are the the main battery for this for this instrument. There's also a clock battery, a CR1225 clock battery, and that's um, necessary to keep that. Keep a fresh battery in there because that's where your data loggers will get their time and date stamp when you relaunch them with the shuttle in the field. Unlike the waterproof shuttle, the U shuttle, because it has an LCD display and a few buttons on the front, uh, three buttons, it gives you the ability to either uh, to choose to relaunch the logger when you read out the data or to leave the logger logging if there's memory left in that data logger. Uh, below that, we see the last time it was launched, and then it compares the computer clock in my computer here to the clock in the shuttle, and we can see we're off by 35 seconds. Again, the, the clock could drift a little bit over a month or so. So, uh, I mean, that's not really that bad, but I always suggest we sync the, we sync the clock to make sure that they match. Launching the shuttle... Down here in the corner, you can see where it says Launch Shuttle. Launching it synchronizes the clock and erases all data files that are in that uh, in that shuttle. But we're going to talk about data files in a minute. Let me, uh, let's me let offload some data from a logger, and we'll have a look at this management screen and see how to manage data files that are in memory in the shuttle. In this image from the shuttle, Manual, we can see on the edge of the shuttle there are several connectors. One is an RJ12, a female RJ12 connector, that allows you to plug in our smart, uh, any of our smart sensors from our uh, station loggers and interrogate the sensors so you can see, uh, make sure they're working okay. It's a good tool to use in the field if you're troubleshooting sensor problems. There's a USB device jack and a USB host jack. So if you want to communicate with loggers, you would plug in the, um, the large connector on your USB cable into the host connector and connect the small jack to your loggers. And then when you get your shuttle back to your office, you switch the cable around, you connect the large connector to your computer, which is now the host, and the small jack to the shuttle as a device. The other round jack is an RS-232 port that allows you allows the shuttle the ability to talk to um, some of our serial loggers like the energy logger or the microstation. So I've offloaded the um, a data logger with the shuttle, and now I want to go into my manage shuttle screen and show you what those data files or that particular data file looks like. Manage shuttle. And it goes in there and it reads the headers of each of the files. Again, there's only one. So you can see here's the logger type. It was a UX100003. The U Shuttle will work with all U series products except the UX120006 because of the size of its memory. It also will not work with the plug load logger, the UX120018. For similar reasons, the, the files are just too big for the shuttle to handle. So you can see here. In my stat, here's my status. Uh, again, uh, it's checked. Off. The, the logger is checked off because the shuttle knows that it has not been read out. It's just been read out, and it hasn't been read out of the shuttle memory yet. 
Here's our logger type, the serial number, the description, which matches the serial number. We didn't put in a, a launch description or a name. Uh, here's when it was launched, and here's our file size. So when it is checked, you, there's a global check all, uncheck all if you want to. Um, here is where you can select to offload the checked files, any files that were not off previously offloaded. So we want to do that, so we're going to say offload checked. And again, that was pretty quick, but you basically got a little status bar that went across. And now the, it's querying. You can see the, the, um, the screen changed a bit. It says files offloaded from shuttle. Here is the default location, which happens to be the last place I was, which was on my desktop. And it wants to create a folder there called shuttle readout, today's date and time. So if I, if I click save checked because this is checked off right if i say save check now it will save that file in that location you can also choose where you want that file to be located uh, and again you don't have to use that folder you don't have to create a new folder if you don't want to you can just drop it right on your desktop as the file itself notice the shuttle offload folder is now gone by default hoboware always creates a folder with today's date and time on it in case you have multiple shuttles you're offloading keeps helps you keep track of your data that way and we click on save checked and now that file is saved notice that we are now unchecked here because it is it is saved this depending on the size of the logger files the shuttle can hold up to 63 uh, it's got four megabytes of memory, so it can sh it can hold up to 63, um, 64k uh, loggers. These are one, uh, the UX100s are 128k, so about half of that. Uh, if you're offloading station loggers, those are even bigger, so it will it will use um, more memory to offload those. Uh, some people like to use the shuttle as a p temporary storage device for their data, and and they archive it there. You can certainly do that. I don't recommend it. I recommend offloading it to your computer and then um, deleting those files from the shuttle so it's ready to use in the field again. You don't want to get it out in the field and realize you don't have enough memory. What I always suggest is once you're, once you're happy with the data file that you've offloaded, I suggest launching the shuttle using the launch shuttle screen because it writes the shuttle header, it sets the clock, and erases all the old data files so that it's all ready to go the next time you use it. So it says, Do you, are you sure? Sure. So now we have a clean slate and we're ready to go for our next um, deployment out in the field uh, to retrieve data from our data loggers. Just to be clear, there were some questions that came in after um, we published this video about how individual files are stored in memory in the shuttle. You can see here we've offloaded six different files from six different types of loggers. They are identified from each other. They are stored in individual file locations in the shuttle memory. And you store those on your computer after you, after you offload them as individual files. So they are not combined into one file. They are kept individual from each other. Um, by logger type, by serial number, and also by launch description. If you gave that a description in Hoboware when you launched the logger initially, that description is retained as the file name.